Uh, Anglo Angola's uh, annual consumer inflation accelerated to 9.25% year-on-year in May. That was from 9% in April. And the ratings agency Fitch expects this trend to continue. So now joining me on the line is Carmen Alton Kirsch, who is Director of Sovereigns uh, at Fitch Rating. Good afternoon to you, Carmen. Let's just talk firstly about that inflation rate uh, and why the acceleration. Well, I think if you, um, when you look at Angola, you really need to look um, at the broader context and what the Bank of Mozambique has managed to achieve over the past year. Um, bringing inflation down to single digits uh, for the first time, in fact, in, in many decades. So it's very difficult to attribute, to attribute what exactly caused inflation to rise from 9% to 9.25%. But at Fitch, uh, we believe that inflation is expected to trend between 9 and 10 percent over the course of 2013. And this will be reflective of the fact that we anticipate exchange rate stability to continue for the rest of this year, continue to see strong foreign direct, um, foreign direct investment inflows. And um, this will all help to support the exchange rate and uh, should help to keep a lid on inflation. Mm. That rating has gone up uh, the positive outlook, uh, or rather an affirmation of the, of the positive outlook. Quite a few positive things. You talk about uh, macroeconomic economic reform, prudent policies there, reducing vulnerability to oil. And, of course, oil often regarded as the curse of a country because they rely on it too much. But Angola seems to be moving away from it, and uh, they've got growth. Well, you, you highlight some very interesting points there. Uh, one, of the, one of the important contributing factors to why we uh, put Angola on positive outlook last year and why we affirmed the positive outlook in uh, 2013 was because um, Angola has reduced its vulnerabilities, uh, firstly in terms of uh, building up foreign exchange reserves to provide something of a buffer in the event that oil prices were to decline. We've also seen very prudent fiscal policy, ensuring that uh, the government builds up uh, deposits, builds up a buffer to ensure that if um, oil revenues decline, that they'll be able to dip into their savings um, as opposed to running significantly larger budget deficits. Mm. And uh, this is a, what looks like a very impressive number. Government debt as a percentage of GDP, that's a number we worry about a lot in South Africa, down to 22% from 36% in two years. That's indeed quite um, impressive, and it reflects a combination of uh, very strong nominal GDP growth, as well as the fact that Angola over the past a couple of years has actually been able to pay down some of its uh, government debt as a result of running uh, large budget surpluses. Mm. So yes, while South Africa and Europe struggles to contain um, rising budgets, Angola has been able to cut, um, cut their debt quite substantially. What's the catch, Carmen? It all sounds very positive. Uh, where are the negatives in this generally positive improving outlook? Well, I must admit, I mean, in uh, Fitch's view, Angola is certainly a very, very positive story, and that's why we put Angola on a positive outlook um, last year. I mean, an another positive to look out for is the start of LNG production in June of this year, which is one factor that will help to contribute to um, Angolan growth of around 8.2% for 2013, which will put it among the top performers growth-wise globally. That sounds very positive for the country and for the region. What about government policy and getting the balance between government intervention in the economy and between encouraging private sector investment? Uh, so the regulatory framework on the one hand and government involvement and private sector incentives on the other. Well, I think, um, you know, Angola has taken a, no a number of positive steps in that regard. I mean, they, they're working towards um, improving the conduct of fiscal policy, for example, by including um, the operations of, of Sonangol, the large um, oil operator, into their government accounts. They're um, looking at ways, particularly at improving the business environment, for example, by um, reducing the time it takes to set up a business, making it easier for foreigners to um, 
open up businesses in um, in Luanda, for example. They've opened up a special economic zone, providing tax incentives to encourage foreign companies to, to operate in Angola. Mm. What about governance? I see the World Bank has uh, a rating of B&B uh, &B median with their indicators for Angola below that. Uh, what's that about? Well, unfortunately, governance um, is the one area where perhaps Angola can look to do um, see significant improvements. However, Angola is not alone. If you look at the other oil producers, for example, uh, Nigeria and Gabon, um, all these countries have um, governance indicators below the B category median. So it, it is certainly a, an area where governments should take heed of and uh, look to improve if they want to see their ratings moving up the rating scale. In terms of democracy, we've got, uh, we had a one-party state for a long time and of course the country came out of a terrible civil war. On uh, the democracy scale, where would Angola sit now? Well, we don't uh, look, for example, directly at uh, democracy, but, for example, um, one will look at, um, you know, an important factor, for example, political stability. And here, Angola's done um, surprisingly well following the uh, civil war. So that's, um, that is encouraging.